Oh, how could it be that my God would walk into his mystery? Take this bread, take this wine, now we for any to receive. Hallelujah. Mercy, we come to your table. By your grace, you are making us faithful. We remember. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Thank you, Jesus, as we worship you. Welcome back. Our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. As overcome trials, mm -mm. hallelujah, and unto him, all are welcome in this place. By your grace, you are made. In a faithful, and we remember you. Remembrance leads us to worship as we worship you. Our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Hallelujah. And I you destroy our debt. Rising, you restore our life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. In dying, he destroy our debt, and when he rise, he restore our life. People of God, go ahead and begin to share. We are back just to break. It's the final hour of the 21 day fasting. My God, the hour has come. It is the final hour of the 21 days of fasting. And we thank God for all his goodness and his mercies. Yep. We thank him for all his goodness and all his mercies concerning our life. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. We thank him for joy and divine peace. Somebody go ahead and raise up your whatever you have, crackers, bread, whatever you find. Bless it because God gave it to you. Whatever is in your position. Let us lift it up to God. We will cross over in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I'm crossing over. I will possess my possession in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will possess all my possession. I will not look back. I will not be held back. I will be going forward in the name of Jesus. I'm going forward. Hallelujah. I will never look back. Jesus. I will never, ever look back. I don't know about you, but I will never look back. Hallelujah. I will never look back. Jesus. Somebody let us speak over what we have. Let us speak over what we have. 
what we can bring to the table right now to allow God to breathe afresh upon it and bless it for us. Hmm. Allow God to breathe afresh upon it and bless it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As we raise this up, we raise it up to God. He told Joshua, now you have to take over. Joshua, now you're going to have to take over. Joshua, you're going to have to take over. Don't be scared. Everything that I told Moses that I was going to give, I'm still giving. God loves to give. He is a promise keeper. So even though Moses died, the promise still stand. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to today. Even though Moses died, the promise still stands. Hey, Ababa Koshata. People of God, even though Moses passed, he was the chosen one to take the children out of Israel out of Egypt. When Moses died, God said, Joshua, know it's your time. Get ready. You are in training. Moses, train you. Whatever you need to know, I'll tell you. We're getting ready to cross over. We're getting ready to move. The Bible reminds Joshua, wherever you set foot, you will possess it. Today, we are possessing our possession to cross over. We will make it. He would never bring us through this, all this right here and leave us. No, we will make it. Oh, Jesus. Somebody said, I will make it. I will make it. He will never bring me to this place to leave me. I will make it. Some of us are too comfortable. We refuse to go on fasting. We can't. Ignore the food. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hmm. I will make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I lift it up to God. Lord, breathe upon it. You said you will never break your promise. You said you will never leave us stranded, Lord. We thank you. Oh God, any iniquity that's in us. If there is any iniquity on our hands, wash our hands, Lord. Any iniquity within us, oh God, remove it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remove it with your blood. Any form of iniquity we are fighting, facing, charge it, oh God, and move it from us in the name of Jesus Christ. Take away the iniquity from us, Lord. Wash our hands clean. Jesus, forgive us for our unbelief. Many have not received their breakthrough because of unbelief, unrighteousness, unforgiveness. Cause people to lose out. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to keep our hands clean. Help us, O oh God, to keep clean hands and pure heart. Help us to stay away from carnality. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 24, the Bible declared that Jesus raised up the bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Jesus raised up the bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. He said, do it in remembrance of me. He broke it. He separated it. When you broke something, you separate it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat it.
Bible said in the same manner he picked up the cup and he said this is the new covenant in my blood as often as you drink it drink it in remembrance of me go ahead and drink <laughs> my god my god <laughs> lord i thank you lord i bless you somebody said thank you jesus for the strength to complete 21 days of fasting hope to continue a few more days amen Hallelujah. People of God, share the message with your people that they can receive their breakthrough. This is not just for you. The Lord bring you here so you could share it. when you're here you know don't let nobody tell you to share that's what we do we share the reason why you are here is because somebody share it and you found it so don't hesitate to share it <laughs> it was a struggle you that's what when you're struggling in your fasting it means that at the end you will receive your breakthrough Oh, God, help us. I have something to read. I receive a testimony. It's a testimony. When an individual can speak the truth of their life, it's testimony. They're testifying. Instagram, give me a second. I'm going to read something. You know... I received this message. I'm not going to call in the name, but I take my hats off to this person. I take my hats off to you. She said, Rev, thanks. It's the first time in my life I fasted 21 days. You push us in strength and motivate us and open our eyes in all manner of life. You are more than a mother to me. All divine intervention, blessings, favor is your portion. You don't know where you brought me to, <laughs> but God will grant you all your heart desire and your children too. Rev, as I was scrolling down on Facebook, here is a pastor. He is preaching your message on Facebook. God is with you, Rev. You are truth. You see, sometimes I don't like to call names. I just like to talk about certain things. Some things, some names we don't have to call. We have a powerful woman of God in our midst. She said, woman of God, it's the first time in my life. In my life, I fasted for 21 days. You push us to the levels. You see, this is the thing that God sent me here to do. I have to do it. And I know this is just the beginning of new things. 
Many people, they have their own church, they have their pastor that they love dearly. But when they come here, they receive bread and fish. They receive the word of God in truth. It's not sugar-coated. You know, I encourage you to continue studying the word of God. I'll be here tomorrow morning as usual. <laughs> it's, it's, it's church as usual for me. That's my life. My fasting on Facebook ends now. But it continues until God says so. On June, on August 16th, Sunday, August 16th, that's like three weeks away. One, two, three, four, five, twelve, yes, nineteen, twenty two days from today. I'll be back on Facebook fasting for seven days. But for now, that's it with Facebook. So I encourage you, I'm going to be fasting. I encourage you. Somebody said, I feel light. Yes, because you, 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 you step to a milestone. This is a milestone. Some of you, God already told you, don't stop fasting. Continue the fasting. You know, this scripture dropped in my spirit. I think it's in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7. I'm not quite sure that when a woman is married or when a man is married, they have to focus on pleasing or how to please their spouse. So the single person is supposed to be strong, stronger in the faith. You out there that are single, you're supposed to be strong in the faith, in the word, because you're not married. You're not, you're not supposed to be focusing on how to please a man or a woman if you're not married. You're supposed to focus on the word and the things of God. So when you're not married, you're supposed to be strong in the Lord. You're supposed to be even stronger than the person that is married because you don't have a husband or you don't have a wife. I'm saying it because I want you to know your position. We have to know who we are. Hmm. Lord help us. We have to know, we need to know, we have to understand who we are in Christ. If you're here and you're not married, let me repeat myself. If you are single, if you're not married, you're not engaged. Because some people engage and they say they are married. Yes. Once you're engaged, you're not married. Until that person signed that paper, and you, yes, and you exchange vows, then you're not married. You're dating. You're playing games. Because sometimes some engagement can be broken. Some people, in the middle of the engagement, they broke it off. They play with your feelings. So I encourage you, stop playing with your feelings and get married. Stop playing dollhouse with your life and get married. If you are engaged, get married. Somebody said, I'm waiting for the money to do the big wedding. No, don't do that. Unless it's already in the process. But don't wait and live like a married couple if you're not married. You're wasting your time. Because sometimes the devil will rob you and destroy this relationship. And all you're going to say, well, I'm not married anyway, so I can leave. No, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. If you're single... You're supposed to be in the word constantly, strong. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Somebody said, Lord, help me. I'm praying the Lord bring me here later on because I, I've been studying the word of God. I, I'm pumped up. You know, I, I, I still feel like preaching. I do. I feel like preaching. But I'm praying God give me permission to come back later. Yeah. It's not easy. 
It's not easy. It has never been easy. <laughs> it has never been easy. But I'm praying God Almighty give us the permission to come back here. Let me share something with the people of God. You see this big, this book? This Bible. Any Bible with the word of God. It doesn't matter the size, the brand, the color, whatever. You can't pray enough. You can't read enough. There is always something new to learn in the Bible. There is always something new to explore. As much as if you read this Bible from cover to cover a million times. If you speak to somebody, say they read the Bible twice, 50, 100 times. There is always something new to go and find. Not because they might read the Bible a few times. It doesn't mean that they know everything. No one knows everything. Only the Spirit of the Lord can put it in your remembrance, whatever you read. So even if you read Daniel, go back again and read it. Sometimes you miss something. If you read Joshua, go back again and study it. Sometimes you miss something. And I'm saying this because some people said, oh, I read it 20 times already. No, you need to go back because there is a word in that scripture for you. There is a word in the scripture for you. So it doesn't matter how much time you go over it. Even if it sounds like a broken record, there is always something new in the word. Always. Somebody says, yes, he told me to fast until he tell me to stop. Please pray for me. Listen, God already showed me that. But I'm not saying anything. I'm just watching to see who is obedient to the voice of God. This kind of fasting, it's elevation fasting. It takes you to other levels in prayer, in your faith. So I'm yet to hear those testimonies. Can you imagine? This is why you cannot measure your life with somebody else's spiritual life. Because if you study the Bible carefully, anytime someone comes among someone else who is deep in the word, they always try to destroy their spiritual life. They always try to put out their fire. But as we read earlier today, the fire in Babylon couldn't put out the fire that the three Hebrew boys were walking with. No fire can put out your godly fire. Keep your fire burning. Let your light shine. My God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you say you don't understand when you read sometimes. You have to pray for that. You see, God, get whenever you're studying the word of God, get yourself a notebook. Write the date down that you found those scriptures. Put your own personal notes under the scripture. You can write in your Bible. Don't let nobody tell you don't write. It's your Bible. Personalize it. You can write little things in the Bible to refresh your memory. Because if you read Daniel chapter 6 today, this time next year you read the same scripture. You get a different revelation. So this is why you have to take notes. Whatever you read today and you take notes, whatever revelation you get from the word, read it six months from now. You will not get the same revelation. You will get a different revelation. And this is when you take notes to remind you of what the Lord told you that day. That's why you take notes when you go to church. <laughs> help me, Jesus. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. I hear the Lord tell somebody, your business is about to take off. You desire to open a business. And the Lord said, you want to sell snacks and food, food and snacks. My God, I hear the Lord said, yes, he's going to give it to you. You see, all we have, it came from the Lord. Unless we stole it or we go and beg. And as Christians, we're not supposed to beg. When you pray, God will send the right people to your life to bless you. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Somebody says, so true, Rev. It is true. I try to teach as much as I can, whatever the Lord placed on my heart to release, release upon this platform. Hallelujah. On the 16th of August, we're going on seven day fasting. I'm not going to go on Facebook every day. But as we get closer, I'll share a few things with you. Somebody said, I learned so much in the 21 days. You need to learn. God brought you here to take notes. So don't just come and say, Pastor, dress like this, or Pastor, dress like that. God don't care how I dress as long as I'm covered. He sent me to bring the word. My dressing is oh, the ability I have to put myself together. I might not be the most well-dressed pastor, you know, but I wear what I have. <laughs> yes, I wear what I have in my closet. I thank God. I have I, I have the ability to come out and, and, and express the word of God in truth and not to concern myself with clothes and material things. I can't do that. Amen. My reward, woman of God, your reward is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. You see, sometimes I will give you surplus because what the Lord dropped in my spirit to share, I share. I share. If you never hear from me again, just make sure you keep the fire burning. That's all I can tell you. If I don't, if, if, if I don't come back on the Facebook ever again, or Instagram, or YouTube, just keep the fire burning. Remember when Moses died, the Lord said, Joshua, it's your time. Sometimes God moved people and elevate other people. Sometimes God changed the story. So when you pray, remember me in your prayer. That's all I can tell you. Remember me in your, and my family in your, and my children in your prayer. Somebody says, so proud. What are you proud of? Somebody says, so proud. What are you proud of? What are you proud of, Brother Devon? <laughs> oh, Jesus. He said, you look elegant, Rev. From I know you, you always dress, dress, not dress up nice. I used to own a store. I used to sell clothes. The first business God ever given me, I used to travel overseas and buy clothes and sell. Before, before I became a woman. That's what I used to do. Yes, travel overseas, buy shoes and clothes, and sell. Because I like to see people dress nice. That's what I used to do. I know how to, yeah, coordinate to a point. People of God, my time is up. I have to go. I'm praying that the Lord permit me to come back later because I have a word. Yeah, first thing I did in my life. First business I ever owned was my own. It was selling clothes. And the Lord brought me to America. Now I'm selling, see, supplying, not selling anymore. Supplying, prayer shawl and anointing oil. God give me oil. Anybody remember the woman in the Bible, the widow that went to Josh, Joshua, no, to, to Elijah, Elisha, not Joshua. She went to Elisha and she said, my husband used to follow you. And now he's dead and he left me in debt. Elisha said to her, what do you have in your house? She said, they want to use my son for, for slaves and whatnot. And 
she said, all I have in the house was oil. And the, the, the man of God told her to go down the street and begin to borrow pans and jars and drums and barrels and keg, whatever you can borrow from your neighbors and your friends and go home and close your doors, you and your son, and begin to pour that oil. You see, let me tell you something, people. This is what he gave me, oil and prayer shawl. This is how I pay my bills. Anointing oil and prayer shawl. That's it. Because this is what the Lord gave me. For now, when I was in the Caribbean, I, I used to sell clothes mm -hmm, and little stuff. That's what that's where my blessing came from. I grew up in business and now I'm here. The Lord gave this to me a year ago. I can say a year ago because it was June last year. A year ago, he gave me prayer shawl and anointing oil. That's it. So order your oil and your prayer shawl. The number is 860-634-8557. And when you order, make sure you send your address. If you're overseas, you have to pay your shipping. It's not free. If you're overseas, you have to pay your shipping. People of God, this is one of my livelihood. Other than studying the word, this is my livelihood. I love to look at these and, and, and yes, pray over them, anoint them, and wait for them to come to you. Hallelujah. If it's going to England, I think it's $37.42. If it's going to Canada, it's $26 and some cents. If it's going to Grenada, I can give you all the details of the prices. And the more stuff in the package, it's the more it costs. I'm saying, I want you to know. And because of COVID-19, they're charging more at the post office because of COVID-19, because they have to take extra precaution to make sure it's sanitized and get to you clean. So for now, my time is up. I have to go. I'm going to go see as far as food. <laughs> I have not had a decent meal in the whole 21 days. I eat small portions of stuff, peek around. But please don't overeat, people of God. Don't overeat. Don't overdo it. Somebody say you look lovely and sharp. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody say, Rev, you are a dresser, a great dresser. I don't know about that part. <laughs> I don't know about the great dressing part, but yeah, I struggle. I still struggle to find my way to be presentable. Somebody said, Pastor, I appreciate you. Lord, I thank you for putting Reverend Joyce and Radigan in my life. Amen. It is well, my sisters and my brothers. Because of COVID-19, I still have stuff in here in package that was returned from Aruba. I have something to send to Grenada. Because of COVID-19, the post, the post office is not taking anything. Because of COVID-19, I have stuff, yes. And Jamaica. God bless you all. Thanks and good evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning. If God don't permit permit me to be here tonight, you will see me in the morning, same time, 8 o'clock. Invite your friends so they can come and receive their breakthrough. Invite family members. Everybody knows somebody who need prayer. Don't be selfish with the broadcast. Share it. Share the broadcast. People need your breakthrough. Don't keep it for yourself. Yeah, I'm very obedient, Sister Elizabeth. I'm very obedient because I know what it is like for the devil to beat me. 
I was disobedient and the devil used to beat me, rob me, disgrace me. You know, so I, I, I don't want to live like that anymore. I've decided to live my life to please God. Mm -hmm. People of God support this ministry. God will bless you. Tell them. <laughs> Whatever the Lord lay on your heart to do for this ministry, do it. Many of you have been coming every day and um, the Lord told you to bless the ministry and you never do it. You know, that is between you and God because that's you're allowing the devil to rob you. Don't let the devil destroy what you have. God bless every penny that came in this direction. It's appreciated. Your dime is appreciated. Your quarter is appreciated. Your dollar bill is appreciated. Whatever the Lord uses to send in this direction, it's appreciated. God bless you.